Josh Stalmont, that's 17 players Kansas City is bringing up. They went heavy with college pitchers in the 2018 draft. In that draft, they selected Singer, Lynch, Kowar, and Bubik in their first 40 picks. They will have all of those four pitchers. They are front-line pitchers, guys. And they will get a close-up look at how they compete against Major League talent. The Tigers, <laughs> speaking of pitching, Casey Mize and Matt Manning, Riley Green, an outfielder, Tariq Skubal, a left-handed pitcher, Isaac Paredes, a third-base shortstop, Willie Castro, a shortstop, Daz Cameron, son of Mike Cameron, an outfielder, Alex Fado, a right-handed pitcher, Jake Rogers, a catcher, Franklin Perez, Bo Burrows, right-handed pitchers, Brian Garcia, Anthony Castro, and Ronnie Garcia, and Kyle Funkhauser, also right-handed pitchers, and finally, Derek Hill. Pitching, that's what it's about. The Tigers, you know how bad they were last year. The worst record, right? And now it's time to see what they can do, bringing up young arms. They're going to give them a shot in this competition against other almost ready Minor league talent, major league talent, rather. So we'll see how the Tigers do bringing up these pitchers. You know, I wish we could see, I don't know what Major League Baseball is planning to do, but wouldn't it be awesome if we could see the uh, inter squad games? I just think that would be incredible if we could do that. And if they would show those, I mean, we got to see Korean baseball in the middle of the night. How about showing us some of these inner squad games? I'd love it, wouldn't you? American League West, Angels. We're going to go through the West and then we're going to stop for today. Joe Adele, Brandon Marsh. These are the two guys, both outfielders, that we hear about the most. The Angels do not have a very deep, heavy, talented minor league system. Okay, but we've heard of Marsh and Adele, and there's a decent chance that each of them, Adele and Marsh, make their major league debuts this year. Now, probably they would certainly have done it had we had a 162 game schedule, but I'm looking for both Adele and Marsh to get some type of call up and be with the Angels. Now, Adele has all the tools, Marsh more of a hit tool, if you will, but interesting to see what they do with these players. The Astros. Let's highlight some of these. And I've seen some of these guys play. I want to talk about these power arms, Forrest Whitley and Christian Javier, just a moment. Okay. They're going to bring Christian Javier and Forrest Whitley on their, I'll call B team, <laughs> JV team. They're going to be pitching against Major League Talent. Forrest Whitley, we know the, the, the derailment. You know, it was, it was it last year, guys, or was it two years ago at the start of the year? People were talking about, oh, by midseason, you're going to see Forrest Whitley uh, in the playoffs. He's going to be like the third starter for Houston in the playoffs. He's that good, and it just never happened. Last year, numbers were horrible at the beginning of the year. They got a little better near the end. He's a power pitcher. He will look really good at times, and other times he just cannot get it together. So this is probably a great opportunity for Whitley to showcase what he can do. Also, it's probably a make-or-break year for Whitley. I mean, he's really had two years in a row down, where, whereas you come in into the 2018 season, Whitley was one of the top prospects in all of baseball. So we'll see how he makes out this year. Christian Javier, what a power arm. He throws in the upper 90s. He progressed through the minor league system last year. Houston would love to see him, I think, in the major leagues this year. I don't think it's an impossible task. I think he very well may be there. He's a big guy, imposing to look at, and throws extremely hard. So we will see. The Astros have included 16 of their top 30 prospects, including five of their top six in their 60-man pool. So we will see if Whitley makes it. We'll see if Javier Vasquez makes it. And then I go to Oakland. 
And the first name I'm going to call, the first two names I'm going to call are, we're clamoring to see what they have. Jesus Lazardo and A.J. Puck, both left-handed pitchers, both have incredible upside, and they both will be making, in my opinion, their debuts for the A's this year. They also will call up Sean Murphy, their catcher, Robert Poussin. Poussin, the second rated prospect in the international pool this year. He's a shortstop. He's their number four prospect. Probably not major league ready, but again, off out of the international draft, he is the second rated international player in the draft this year. So the A's, we're going to be looking at those pitchers. Now, I don't want to call all these names going to Seattle, but may I just say they are calling up 22 minor leaguers to their 60-man roster. And two or three really stand out to me. Now, I'm going to go through the top prospects here. But Jared Kelenek, I think if we had had a full season, Kelenek would have been the major leagues. He may still well be there this year. One player I feel really certain, Hanniger is out, okay? He was placed on the 60-day IL this weekend. So he's going to be out for a while. And it's projected right now that Jake Fraley, listen to that name, Jake Fraley will get the opportunity during Hanniger's absence. We shall see about that. But right now he's going to be given a look. Now we know other prospects like Julio Rodriguez, uh, Logan Gilbert, Evan White, Novelli Marte, a shortstop. These are top flight prospects. The Mariners are stocked in their minor leagues, and I think they have one of the most underrated minor league systems right now in probably all of baseball. I really do. I think we'll see how they start out, but I think it gives Kellenek and Rodriguez, a chance to join the conversation about making the open and aid roster. We may see Evan White in the big leagues. You know, he signed a six-year, $24 million deal in November, so they've got money invested in that. Would not be surprised to see him up at the major league level. And then there's Texas. Josh Jung, their number one pick in the 2019 draft, heads their list. I have seen every one of these players on this list but for Josh Jung. And the reason I have not seen him is because he was drafted. He never got up to high A last year, and now we don't have a season. Probably would have started the year at high A, but hey, I missed out. But Sam Huff, their catcher, you've heard me talk about him on other shows. Great power. He was the most valuable player of the Futures game last year. He homered in that game. That's Sam Huff. He's a catcher. He's a big kid, good arm. He also can play some outfield. That's right. And then they have their formerly number one rated prospect, Leody Tavares, who's a speedy outfielder, not a lot of power, but a good hit tool. Uh, and we'll see how the Rangers do. Now, pitching-wise there, not a lot of – first of all, they have less than 10 players off of there. Uh, but they've got Tyler Phillips, a right-handed pitcher, Demarcus Evans, a right-handed pitcher, and Jonathan Hernandez, a right-handed pitcher, along with lefty Joe Palumbo. So, yeah, Sam Huff was a good linebacker. He's a great catcher, too. It's amazing how he can span the decades, George, being so good in the 50s and now being a baseball player in the 20s. It's amazing, right? He, he just spans the generations. So – we're going to talk tomorrow about the National League, and we're going to have a schedule out this week. Uh, I've heard some some rumblings about the schedule, guys. It's got uh, you know I follow the Yankees. I'm a Yankee man, so we've got the Yankees. The way I understand it, I guess this leaked out over the weekend too. They're going to open the season in Washington on Thursday. July 23rd, you're probably going to see Max Scherzer, or you might see Strauss. I don't know. But it's going to be one of them against Garrett Cole, assuming everybody plays. And uh, that's how the Yankees and Nationals start the year. How would you like to face those pitchers day one? Wow. Um, But you're going to play, the Yankees are going to play six games against the Mets, ten games in their division against every team. So there's 46 games. And the other 14 
divided to be divided among the other four National League East teams. So what I'm gathering is Major League Baseball is still wanting to implement and promote the natural, what they call the natural rivalries. I, I'm good with the Mets playing the Yankees six times. But tell me about the natural natural rivalry between, say, uh, Tampa and Miami. I mean, I know geographically you're close, but is that really a rivalry? I mean, do you think Tampa Bay looks at their schedule and says, uh, hey, you know, I really want to beat the Yankees. I really want to beat the Red Sox. But the team I really want to beat the most is the Miami Marlins. I don't think that's happening. I, I just don't see that happening. I mean, the the Blue Jays, they wake up in the morning. Yeah, I want to beat the Yankees. I want to beat the Red Sox. But I hate the Phillies. I, are you kidding me? I, and so I'm okay with it. I mean, you know, I want some baseball. But I don't see the need to really load up on those rivalries that really aren't rivalries, right? We'll see. But when that schedule comes out, we'll talk about that this week. And looking at the schedule, how does that affect your fantasy outlook for 2020? You know, I'm just, let me throw this out there. You take a team like Minnesota or Cincinnati, they're going to be playing against, well, not so great arms in the National League Central. Whereas if you're in the American League and National League East, you're going to be going up against the Yankees, the Red Sox, the Braves, the Mets, the Nationals. Pretty good company, wouldn't you say? So I'm sure everybody's drafted. You got the DH. We've talked about that ad nauseum. Great year. Who's excited? I am really excited about the fact that there may be baseball now. The one thing now that we have to be concerned about is the virus. It's, it's out there. Hopefully, wise people will prevail and play, parameters will be made and we'll follow those and we'll have a season. It's going to be a great year. I, I, I can't wait. So, again, thank you for being with me this morning, Andrea and Clarona and Doug Boyle and George and Jack and King Hap. Guess what? All right. I'm going to get with Andrea pretty soon. I'm going to figure out this video thing. So when I do my show, we're going to go video. How about that? And I'm going to wear my very own King Hap t-shirt. Oh, yeah. That's going to be my debut uniform. I think I'll wear a King Hap t-shirt and my Yankees cap, Hap. How's that for a difference in style? I, that's what I'm planning to do. A Yankees cap, a King Hap t-shirt, and live video, and we're going to talk about baseball. It doesn't get much better than that. Really. I'm ready for it. So, thank you for being with me this morning. I'll be back again Tomorrow, we'll talk about National League rosters, maybe a schedule. And if I have my King Hap shirt, it's going to be the picture on my show when I post it online. How about that? Guys, have a great day. Take care. And I'll be talking with you tomorrow on the Lenny Melnick Fantasy Sports Network.